Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of my Chinese mini lathe series where I'm improving things. This episode's going to be about the motors and the problems I've had. I've gone through two motors and a controller. I'll explain that later on in the video why so those went wrong. It will be then upgraded to this larger motor. Frustratingly, I actually had to fix my lathe twice. Because I don't have a secondary lathe, I had to fix it once to modify a part to then fix it again. Before we cover the topic of the motors and the issues that I've had with it, I need to jump into improving the bearings in this head stock to allow me to handle the extra power and the motor that I'm going to fit. So let's jump into that and I'll show you what I've done. Once the lathe was stripped down, the first challenge was to get the shaft out of the headstock. I used jacking bolts to remove the shaft and then used a puller to remove the last bearing from the main shaft. Okay, so now I've got all this apart, I will try and explain what's going off. So these are the old bearings. Uh, as I've mentioned before, these are just a ball inside. And when they wear, they give you end flow and lateral uh, movement, which can affect the chuck head. So the conversion is going to be these taper bearings. So the idea is, is that we'll put these, the outer races inside the main headstock. And these then go on the shaft. So this one would go on here. And the other one that goes at the other end that way and then you clamp till you've got perfect like zero end float going that way um, hopefully while it's still being free running in this direction then that means i can then set that into the headstock and then set the um what would you call preloved on the other bearing tightening up on this end I don't know why I thought that hammering the shaft in was a good idea. I think it's because I didn't have a bearing heater at the time. I'd measured the bearings and they looked good. But as you can see here, I had to improvise and use my hot air gun to heat the bearing and voila, it went straight on. Easy peasy. Next, I preloaded the bearings with high temperature lithium grease. This is the same stuff that you would use on wheel bearings on cars. So the idea being is the grease will stay in even at high speed and stay put. Okay, so I'm going to briefly touch on the electronics. I am not an electrician by trade. So I'm just going to show you the basics of what I know. If you're unsure, please use an electrician to wire in what you want to wire in. This is the motor manual. Now I know it's 1.5 kilowatt motor. It's three phase, so I know that I've got to wire in three phase. And I know what hertz it runs at, which is 50 hertz. So then I then consult the inverter which tells me here that I've got basic, the basic wiring here to run a three phase motor requires then a delta configuration on the motor, which is this one here. So it then shows you the wiring here on how to wire the motor up. You then take that wiring to here and wire it into the inverter and follow the instructions on this. So the inverter will allow you to run a single phase electrics input and then an output to three phase which allows you to run the motor and then control the speed of the motor. So once I'd got the motor wired up this is where I could temporarily fix my lathe so that I could modify this part. Now, 
you could actually run it with the pulleys that I'd fitted. However, what hinders that then is the ability to add your screw feed onto it because the pulleys were far too big for then the gears to fit back on again. Now this was a better solution with this modification because it meant that I could essentially fit all the gears back in the same way that they came off. So when it was 3mm sticking out you'd put this on and then the keyways disappeared. That was no good. So by taking the 3mm off this makes that seat back properly. I can put the original spacer in there and then there's enough keyway now to hold this in place. Get the keyway in the right place. There you go. So that now doesn't spin and then also allows for this gear to sit in line with this. So now that's all in line and in the right place. Whereas before with the new bearings, that wasn't in the right place. Here I'm quickly checking the end float on the headstock. Turns out it was pretty good. So I didn't actually have to make any adjustments apart from to lock the nuts up on the back. I didn't have a C-spanner to lock the nuts so I had to make do and use a screwdriver and a soft mallet. Now originally the belt ran down this way and out the bottom to the smaller motor. I need to get this back here now. This motor will be higher up, so I need to modify this plate for it to go out the back. So what I need to do, essentially, for this belt to run out the back this way, I need to now modify this plate here for the belt to come out the back. Now I won't affect the fitting at the top here and the other mounting is at the bottom at the back here. So this removal of this should be fine. To get the motor up where I wanted it to be, at the back of the lathe, I decided to create a large plate that would pivot from the base. This would then allow me to tension the belts as required. Now the material I used to mount the motor is what you would call high pressure laminate. So it's a material that is a resin and paper compressed. This material is a very rigid material but it can be quite brittle and it's a little bit hard to work with when it comes to drilling and cutting but it will do because it's the only material I had at the time it's only got to hold the motor and the motor is effectively independent of the lathe I drilled and tapped the top of the headstock to accommodate this bracket I actually repurposed this from an old chair mount from a car. As you saw earlier on, there was hardly any vibration on the motor, so I didn't have any worries or concerns about how this motor was going to run on the plate that I'd created.
Now the motor's mounted, I could then just attach the belt, adjust the tension and get all that set correctly. Now that that's all done, it's just a case of reassembling all the drive gears back onto the end of it and fitting all the guards. I had to slightly adjust the guard to suit where the belts were going to come out. And then for safety reasons, I felt it was best to create a little cover to cover the belts and the pulley. This was created from an old PC power pack cover. So here we go, it's all done and all back together. Fully running and controllable. I now have far better speed control, more torque and less chance of stalling the motor. I can potentially take deeper cuts with it, but this lathe needs more modification before that takes place. Okay guys, before I finish this video, I'm just gonna discuss a few things with this conversion. This is an upgrade on a lot of power and torque. It's a 1.5 kilowatt motor. I think I've quadrupled the torque on it. Now, this is a solution, but without upgrades, this potentially could damage your lathe. So I've done this so that I don't keep destroying motors. Now, I'm not then necessarily gonna push my lathe to machine more. I just want it to still be able to do what it could do, but not have the issue of a motor being broken all the time. So going forward with this, there's going to be some more evolution of this machine. I am going to be putting a tachometer on it so that I can measure the speed. I am going to be putting a temperature sensor on it so that I can monitor the temperature of the motor so that if I'm running it at low speed, I'm not going to overheat it, which I think was one of the issues with the old types of motors they just have lack of cooling i mean th those old motors the bodies are pretty much solid solid magnets really thick no form of cooling the slower you run those motors the less airflow is pulled through them so they just overheat and i think that was one of the issues the other issue that i had which was my controller that blew Again, with that, I think what happened was at some point Swarf had got in behind the, the back of the cover and blew the electrics. Now, with this new inverter, I can now, on a future conversion, I am going to put back these controls, but I can feed these buttons to the inverter, which allows me to control it nearer to the machine rather than leaning around the machine to like fiddle with that dial and speed control which is not ideal when you're trying to run a machine so that's going to be added in i've already covered the belts up for safety but another thing that got removed were in the process of the electrics getting blown and being changed was this got broken which is my um, chuck head cover with the switch and again what I can do is wire this into the e-stop feature and then ensures that if this is up the machine won't run because it thinks the e-stop's been pressed. So those are the things that I'm going to do into the next video coming up. It's not out yet as you can see I've not there and I'm not done but that will be the next phase to keep adding bits and improving things. There's various other bits I need to do with it those I'll cover in other videos. I'm not going to now. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you've got this far, I'd be really grateful if you'd go for the old like button, the subscribe button if you're a new uh, watcher. And uh, you'll see the evolution of this lathe going forwards and more things that I'm going to modify on it. So thanks for watching. Take care.